Hello there and welcome. We're going to start with a new chapter called Air, Water and Weather. Firstly, let's look at our atmosphere. So what is atmosphere? Now, if you look at this picture, this is the earth. Okay, this is the earth. This is the surface of our earth. Everything that is present above it is our atmosphere. So how can we define atmosphere? The blanket of air that surrounds the earth is called as the atmosphere. So you can see here this hazy blue blanket that is surrounding the earth's surface is what we call as the atmosphere. Secondly, we look at the density of the atmosphere. What do we mean by density? Density is nothing but thickness, okay? So when we talk about density of the atmosphere, the atmosphere is said to be thick near the ground, that is near the surface of the earth, and it gets thinner as we move upwards. So you can see in this picture right here, near the earth's surface, it's very thick and opaque, whereas as we are moving upwards, it becomes thinner and thinner and finally disappears into nothing at space. Now, sufficient air for breathing is present only up to the height of 15 kilometers. So, this explains why certain mountain climbers and mountaineers need to carry oxygen cylinders when they are going to trek up a mountain. Because as they are moving up a mountain, the thickness of the atmosphere is going to reduce, which means it will make it more harder for them to breathe. So, that's why they need an external support and they carry an oxygen cylinder with them. Let's talk about the layers of the atmosphere now. Now we will be concentrating only on the last two layers that is the troposphere and the stratosphere. So let's see the troposphere first. Okay, so if you notice here, the layer closest to the earth is troposphere. Okay, so this is the layer closest to earth. It extends about 15 kilometers from the surface of the earth. So this is about 15 kilometers. This is the area which will have air sufficient for our breathing. So living beings can breathe air that is present in the troposphere comfortably. Now clouds form in this layer bringing down rain. So this is the region where you see clouds. So you can see plain clouds, you can see rain clouds, so you can see different kinds of clouds. So what does this also tell you? That is why it is called as the weather layer because weather changes occur here. So because changes in weather occurs in the troposphere, it's also called as the weather layer. Let's see the next layer that is just above troposphere. It is called as the stratosphere. It lies just above the troposphere as we can see in the diagram. It is about 35 kilometers thick, okay? So when troposphere is 15, stratosphere is 35 kilometers thick, okay? And this is the region where jet planes fly. You can see that this is a jet plane. It is taking off into the stratosphere. So this is the zone of the jet planes. Next, we'll talk about how atmosphere protects life or how atmosphere is supporting life on Earth. Now, if we see the first and the most important point is that it provides oxygen for all living beings. You know that living beings breathe oxygen, including us. We all breathe oxygen. So this oxygen is provided by the atmosphere. Secondly, provides carbon dioxide to plants. Now, what is the importance of carbon dioxide? Now, plants utilize carbon dioxide to prepare food. So because of carbon dioxide, plants prepare their food. And what happens to the food? animals will consume this food directly or indirectly the next point is this is another very important point this atmosphere absorbs heat and prevents the earth from overheating during the day so during the day when the sun is really hot it absorbs all the heat and prevents the earth from overheating whereas at night it retains heat. What does retain means? It holds in all the heat. So it retains heat and prevents it from freezing. The last and the final most important point is that right on top of stratosphere, there's a layer of gas called as the ozone. Okay, so if you can see this diagram here, this region that is right above the stratosphere is what is called as the ozone. So this ozone is a blanket of gas that is present. The sun produces certain harmful radiations which are called as UV radiation. Okay, so it produces UV rays. Now, these UV rays are very harmful to living organisms. They can kill living organisms. 
so we shouldn't allow uv rays to come into the earth surface so that job is taken care of by ozone okay so on top of stratosphere there is a layer of gas called as the ozone which absorbs all the uv rays emitted by the sun and prevents it from entering the earth so that way it is keeping us safe from all of these harmful uv radiations that is produced by the sun now let's see composition of air now when we see composition of air we're talking about all the components that air is made up of so if you see here in this nitrogen occupies the maximum concentration nitrogen is about 78% of the air is composed of nitrogen whereas oxygen the gas that we breathe occupies only about 21% and the rest 1% is composed of all other gases and impurities. By all other gases, I mean gases like argon, we have carbon dioxide and other impurities. We're talking about dust, we talk about smoke and all other pollutants that are present in the atmosphere. Now, in this, the very interesting part is in this 1%, only 0.03% of it is carbon dioxide. Now let's see some of the properties of air. We've already spoken about different uh, composition. Now let's talk about the different properties of air. Now we will be seeing four different properties of air. The first one is air occupies space. The second one is air has weight. The third is air is needed for burning. And the fourth one is that air exerts pressure, each of which we'll be seeing with a simple experiment. So the first one is air occupies space. saw an experiment to prove that air occupies space so we took a large bowl of water and we took an empty glass by an empty glass we can also say that this empty glass was filled with air so this empty glass was filled with air and we took a large bowl filled with water now initially we saw that none of the water could enter inside so when we slightly tilted the glass, all of the air particles or all of the air bubbles that are present within the glass started escaping out. Okay, so you can see here there is this large air bubble that is formed. So that is air is escaping out. Now once air escapes out, water can easily enter into this glass. Okay, so you saw water started entering in. So what does this say? That air was occupying the space that was in the glass. That was why water was not entering. Once air escaped out, water entered. So we could say that air occupies space. The next property of air is that air has weight. So for this, we'll prove it with a simple experiment. So we're going to take a balance here this is a weighing balance and we have two different balls so we have one which is a deflated ball and one which is an inflated ball so what is a deflated ball and what is an inflated ball a deflated ball is a ball which does not have any air inside it so it is an empty ball whereas an inflated ball is a ball which is filled with air we have just filled air into the ball so when we keep this on a weighing balance the weighing balance tilts towards the ball which is filled with air. So with this experiment, we could easily prove that air has weight because the weighing balance tilts towards the ball that is filled with air. The next property is that air is necessary for burning. We'll see this with another simple example with a candle. So 
so what did we see now we saw that once the candle was kept as it is it just kept burning whereas once we shut this with a glass we saw that the candle slowly switches off okay so why do you think the candle slowly switches off because it's using all the oxygen and all the air that is present in its atmosphere that is within the glass and finally where there is no more air left it switches off so this proves that air is needed for burning to happen let's see the last property now air exerts pressure this is not magic but it is just simple science so when we saw that this cardboard is placed on water and you tilt the glass upside down it is nothing but air pressure that pushes on this cardboard from all four directions okay so air is pushing on this cardboard and making sure that water does not escape out so water is unable to come out of this because air is pushing on this cardboard so with this we can prove that air exerts pressure now because of air pressure this cardboard does not come out and the water from the glass does not spill out so these are the four properties of air that we will concentrate on let's see the next part uses of air pressure now we saw a beautiful magic trick with uh, with the help of air pressure let's see the uses of air pressure now this is something that all of us have seen this is something that we've all used this is nothing but a straw now how does the straw work when we are going to pull from a straw how is it that we get the juice in our mouth that is because initially we're going to pull out all the air that is present in the straw okay so when the straw is filled with air initially when we are pulling from one side all the air from the straw we are pulling in so this creates a decrease in air pressure all right so when we are pulling air from the straw there is a decrease in air pressure that we are creating now because there is a decrease in air pressure all the juice that is present here will move in because suddenly in the juice there is an increase in air pressure so this is the mechanism in which the straw is going to help this is nothing but air pressure so there is a difference in air pressure while inside the straw there is a decrease in air pressure whereas in the drink there is an increase in air pressure so this kind of difference in air pressure is helping us pull the juice through the straw a similar kind of fashion is used in the medicine dropper this is a kind of medicine dropper that uh, they use for administering polio drops so this is also working in the similar fashion with decrease and increase in air pressure and another thing is our syringe you can draw medicines into the syringe through decrease and increase in air pressure so all these three that is the straw the medicine dropper as well as the syringe all function in the same mechanism or the same principles of increase and decrease of air pressure so you can see the importance of air pressure here now let's see the next part of the chapter which is atmospheric pollution all right so what is atmospheric pollution so the air that surrounds us contains particles of dust and smoke and also very very harmful gases so these dust and smoke and harmful gases makes the air that surrounds us very dirty or polluted now let's see how it gets dirty so this atmospheric pollution is caused mainly because of smoke and poisonous gases from factories and vehicles so you can see here how much smoke this vehicle is giving out this is all contributing to atmospheric pollution on the other hand you can see how this factory is giving out such thick fumes into the atmosphere so when fossil fuels such as coal or oil are burnt in factories or when petrol is burnt in vehicles you find this kind of smoke that is given out that is polluting our atmosphere so with this we complete this part of the chapter let's do a quick recap so in this chapter we studied about the atmosphere 
We saw different layers of the atmosphere in that we concentrated on troposphere and stratosphere. We saw how atmosphere supports life. We saw what all air contains of, that is we saw nitrogen, oxygen and we saw other impurities. We saw different properties of air. We saw four different properties of air and we did a simple experiment to prove each of those properties. And finally, we saw what was atmospheric pollution. I hope you understood what was dealt. If you have any doubts regarding this part of the chapter, please feel free to comment below and we will get back to you as soon as possible. If you like this video, please hit the like button, please share it with your friends and please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.